I want to preface this video by saying that I like Erased. I think it's a good show and it's worth watching. I don't want to be upfront with that because I know that I'm going to spend most of this video criticizing the parts of it that don't work. Because while Erased is good, it's frustratingly close to being great. And yes, this video will contain spoilers. In the setup to this 12 episode series, we're introduced to Satoru Fujinuma. Satoru is a man who doesn't seem to have much going for him, and we learn through his struggles as a manga writer that he has issues getting in touch with his emotions and desires. What Satoru does have is a latent ability he calls Revival. When disaster is about to strike, Revival throws Satoru back in time briefly, giving him enough time to change the course of events and save lives. We see this when Satoru is out delivering pizzas on his other job. Revival alerts him to an unresponsive truck driver and he's able to intervene and save a young boy's life but is injured in the process, prompting his mum to move in with him and help with his rehabilitation. The recovery seems to be going well until he returns one day and finds his mum dead and is accused of killing her. Revival kicks in but instead of taking him back to when his mum died, it takes him back to his childhood, 18 years ago and just before the murder of someone else, one of his classmates. Satoru resolves to save this classmate, Kaio Inazaki, reclaim his life and change the course of history. Now based on that premise, there are a few things that really stand out. We've got a reclusive, passive protagonist getting a rude wake-up call, time travel shenanigans, a murder mystery, and an opportunity for some rose-tinted childhood nostalgia. Erased's issues is that where it delivers brilliantly on some of those, it really trips itself up on others. Let's start with time travel because that sets the tone for other things. Revival, Satoru's time travel power is a total plot contrivance and I don't think that's really a massive issue necessarily but I think it's worth noting that looking back at the show and reviewing it, things like where it comes from, how it works and why Satoru has it don't hold up under any scrutiny. The show never tries to explain it, which is fine, but Satoru doesn't have any agency over it, so it just pops in and out of the story at the whim of the writer, just used to get him from point A to point B. Again, I don't think that's a major issue. I think the viewer gets more out of Revival being used to set up these dramatic moments than they would having to listen to expository dialogue about the mechanics of the power, but it is indicative of a lot of Erased's problems in that things happen because the plot needs them to, regardless of them actually making a lot of sense. In fact, time travel itself seems to vanish from the story for long periods when the plot doesn't require it, and I think it could have been integrated more cleverly so that it doesn't just feel like convenient plot magic. Maybe Satru has a plan where he is anticipating revival to kick in and it doesn't, so he has to face the consequences of that, or he's about to unveil who the killer is and then it does kick in and it makes him miss his opportunity. I just think it could have been used more. The other major problem which is more central to the issues with the race in general is the murder mystery. It's pretty weak. Just looking at the setup alone, the murder of Satoru's mum is too sloppily written to really be taken seriously. The killer doesn't have Satoru's predictive powers or anything equivalent, so there's a lot of assumption happening on his part for his plan to work. He has to assume that one, Satoru won't come home two minutes earlier and just catch him in the act. Two, Satoru will find the body and be spotted by a neighbour before he has a chance to call the police. Three, that neighbour will automatically assume that Satoru is the killer. Four, Satoru won't try and explain himself between the neighbour finding him and the police arriving. Five, Satoru won't try and explain himself to the police. Six, the police will immediately arrest Satoru on site without conducting an investigation. Seven, Satoru will attempt to flee police custody and make himself look guilty for no reason. Like time travel, the story needs Satoru to be accused of murder, and so he is even though it doesn't really make any sense for that to happen. But beyond the cheap setup, the murder mystery itself never really clicks into gear. I'd boiled it down to just two suspects, which honestly is a, probably a wider net than most. One was a character consistently throwing up more red flags than Tiananmen Square on Karl Marx's birthday, and the other was a 
purely theoretical character who didn't actually exist on the show but potentially might have done due to time travel. Which means that the story only really has one substantiated suspect for who the killer could be. It's Gaku. The guy who did it. So I'd fanfiction this other character, this other potential suspect, which was Satoru caught in a time loop of going back and undoing the timeline and fixing the timeline because Gaku was so obvious that I anticipated that there had to be another twist. It's not much of a mystery if there's only one character who's actually suspicious. I've also got a minor complaint about the kids don't feel believably 10 or 11 years old to me. Kenya is more put together at 11 than basically all the adults in the show. If they were 13, 14 and maybe could have bought it a bit more, but it's, it's not a big deal because it, it's feeding into that childhood nostalgia trip that the show really does deliver well on. Where character believability is more of an issue is in the 2006 modern timeline where Irie and her manager have a farcical relationship that I don't know if it was supposed to be funny or not. None of the characters feel like someone who's just discovered that someone they work with has been accused of killing their own mum. Even when they do believe him and think he's innocent, they never feel to ask how he might be doing or what sort of trauma he might be going through. Satoru himself also feels more inconvenienced by the police than finding his mum's body. And again, it stems from the writing being too plot focused. Everybody's either trying to implicate Satoru or exonerate him and it's about getting all these characters from point A to point B rather than thinking about what would they realistically feel or how would they act in this situation. And for a lot of shows that, that might fly, but in a race with the subject matter and the heaviness that it's dealing with, it feels a little bit cartoony. It's interesting coming to the show five or so years after its release and seeing how people reacted to it when I went in with no expectations. Learning how the show was received is interesting because it seems that people seem to really strongly like it and then were very disappointed by the ending. Personally, the ending's a bit lame, but it's not show ruining, I've definitely seen worse. What's interesting though is that there seems to be a disconnect between what the show thinks it is and why people care about it. Erased promotes itself as a psychological thriller and fans built expectations based on that, but it isn't a particularly good one. What the story actually does deliver on is that adolescent fantasy of scrappy kids taking on the world, feeling the free spirit of being young running around town, getting into trouble, having secret hangout spaces and feeling bigger and braver than you actually are. It's about capturing winter with visuals that make you feel the cold of those frosted Hokkaido nights and the warmth of a hot meal and the closeness of friends. And about the flawlessly tender moments between Satoru and Kaio as she opens up to his efforts to turn her life around and save her. I said I'd spend most of the video criticising Erased for what it does wrong, but the reason that those are so frustrating is because when Erased is good, it's incredible. The storyline of Kayo's abusive home life is linked to the murder story but can be separated and its writing, particularly in how it affects Kayo's personality, is heartbreaking. Satoru's attempts to get Kayo away from all that and the budding trust that she puts in him as she believes that somebody in the world actually cares about her is easily the most compelling aspect of the show. So many of Erased's most memorable moments arise from the sweetness of Satoru creating a space where Kayo doesn't have to feel afraid. From their first real conversation in the park to that scene at the Christmas tree, the day in the museum and, of course, Kayo breaking down at the sight of her first home-cooked breakfast. Satoru and his mum's attempts to extend the warmth of their relationship to Kayo is what makes the show worth watching. I have complained a lot about Erased, but this is where the good outweighs the bad. These real moments of downtime are where the story finds its charm, in giving the characters room to breathe and not just rushing them around from set piece to set piece. The story is clearly capable of writing this good, I just wish we had more of it. Naturally, when Kayo's abuse plot is wrapped up, 
the narrative loses some of its steam and has to rely more on the weaker mystery killer plot. It makes me wonder if the whole show should just have been about saving Kayo. She could have died without a mystery murderer being on the loose and it would have given the show a bit more focus but I mean that's not the show that we got so I can't really judge it on that. But that's where I think a lot of the disconnect between the audience and the show comes from. Erased wants to be a murder mystery but the heart of the show is not in unmasking a killer, it's in the relationship between an abused girl and the boy who's trying to save her. And yes, I've seen the memes and while I don't personally think they should have ended up together largely because I anticipated Irie was going to be the end game because I don't know what else she was supposed to have been, there's no denying that Kayo and Satsuru's relationship is the heart of the show and the strength of that against the weaker aspects of Erased contribute to that divide between what the story thinks it is and why people actually care about it. Erased is a flawed show but a worthy one all the same. Some people will love everything about it, others won't be able to see past its shortcomings and as frustrating as those failings are, they only feel that way because of how good the show is when it's focused on the right things. The good outweighs the bad and although it could have been so much better, I'm glad a show as troubled as Erased gets to exist and I'm glad I got to see it.